Thank you all so much for coming tonight. Um, COS Orchestra and I have uh, a fantastic program to share with you. We had so many pieces, wonderful orchestral pieces to choose from at the beginning of the semester. And these are the ones that survived our, the, the fierce competition. <laughs> and uh, we decided to make this uh, concerto night. Um, I just, uh, I'm just really so excited that there are some of the finest talents uh, in this community. Some of them uh, moved two years ago, a year ago. Uh, and I just uh, wanted to take this opportunity to introduce those wonderful talents to you. And CRS Orchestra members all love them too. So you hear uh, three pieces in the beginning that are written in the concerto style. Does everyone know what concerto is? Yes? So concerto is usually, usually there's a, uh, so orchestra usually has a soloist and there's a small force soloist. Um, and it's sometimes in competition with the orchestra, sometimes it's in harmony with the orchestra. There are all these musical materials are introduced by the soloist and also by the orchestra. And sometimes they go hand in hand, other times they create this drama. And uh, the soloist is going to be Caroline Carroll, our concert master. <laughs> So quiet out there. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Um, I think I'm going to hand Michael or someone my bow as well. <laughs> so um, anyway, I have a few notes about uh, the next piece. So uh, Vivaldi was a priest, a composer, a virtuoso violinist, and a teacher. He lived primarily in Venice, Italy, from 1678 until... 1741, you do the math. Vivaldi traveled all over Europe, as many composers did at that time. And he produced an astonishing number of works, both instrumental, choral, and operatic. A harsh joke about Vivaldi is that he wrote one concerto 250 times. But um, apparently Bach would disagree, as he was deeply influenced by Vivaldi's work, holding him in very high regard. So Vivaldi was associated most of his adult life with the Ospedale de la Pietà, and one source maintains, and I quote, often termed an orphanage, this Ospedale was in fact a home for the female offspring of noble men and their numerous dalliances with their mistresses. The young ladies were well looked after and the musical standards among the highest in Venice. Um, other less colorful versions say that the Ospedale was truly an orphanage and that the young ladies had the good fortune to learn music. Either way, they were lucky to learn from one of Italy's finest musicians. So the famous uh, violin concertos known as the Four Seasons were as popular in the Baro Baroque era as they are today. Many of you have probably heard them on BMW commercials and all kinds of places. Um, they're known as descriptive or programmatic music, a typically Italian music style, where actual events and sounds are por portrayed through the music. The concerti were published in 1720, I won't give an exam afterwards, uh, with accompanying poems or sonnets depicting a sort of storyline for each season. We've aptly chosen winter to play tonight, Though those of us in the audience here can relate to the words of the sonnet. So I'll just briefly go over some of these. Um, so the first movement, it's a fast one. So the, uh, the poem says, frozen and shivering in the icy snow, in the severe blasts of a terrible wind, to run stamping one's feet each moment, one's teeth chattering through the cold. About two weeks ago we were there, right? So the Largo is to spend, uh, the, the slow movement, spend quiet and happy times by the fire while outside the rain soaks everyone. This is just a loose translation from the Italian. I'm sure it's much better in Italian. Okay, the uh, last movement, also fast, is to walk on the ice with tentative steps, going carefully for fear of falling, to go in haste, slide, and fall down to the ground 
to ag go again on the ice and run in case the ice crap cracks and opens. To hear leaving their iron-gated house Sirocco, Boreas, and all the winds in battle. This is winter, but it brings joy. Thank you.
So this is the third soloist I was going to introduce you to. Gloria Gazab, please welcome. So about a year and a half ago, I was just telling my friends, it's about time that we have a fantastic soprano in this community, and then she just moved from the barrier. So she sings uh, down in the barrier still, and uh, go, uh, drives down to uh, Sacramento to sing in the Sacramento Opera. And she's now a full-time resident here, so we're excited to have her and present her in this uh, wonderful concert aria by Mozart. Enjoy. So this aria is considered Mozart's um, best work for a concert aria. And this was written as an insert aria for his remaking of the opera uh, Idomineo. And for the character of Idamante, he wrote this aria. Now this aria and the reworking of Idomineo was performed for the prince of Vienna of the time in 1786. So it translates, you ask me to forget you? How can it be? How could I possibly forget you? I would rather die than to put my affection on someone else. Come, death, I await you. I await you bravely. How could I warm myself to another flame? Fear not, my beloved. My heart is always yours. When I hear you sigh, it is mournful to my heart. And I cannot express myself enough. Oh God, I would rather die than to give up loving you.
Enjoying the concert so far? <laughs> You're right. Did you hear that? So now we would like to play for you Symphony Number no. Five, and this is our last piece. And thank you all again for coming to our concert. And um, just quickly, uh, a note about ne next semester: uh, Carolyn Carr is going to be teaching chamber music ensemble. So you can expect a wonderful chamber music concert at the end of the spring semester. And Dr. Ron Slaybink is, as, as usual, teaching all these choirs, doing a wonderful job. So if you sing, please sign up with uh, Ron's choirs. It's a lot of fun, I hear. And also, uh, Dr. David Blink is uh, teaching jazz band and also, also concert band. And he's doing a wonderful work uh, with music theory students. They're all composing now beautiful works. So if you're interested in learning more about music, I encourage you to sign up for Dr. David Blink's music theory class. So thank you all so much for coming. Happy holidays to you.
I just want to say one more word. So we have so much fun together in this orchestra. If any of you used to play any instrument, orchestra instrument, you're welcome to sign up for CUS Orchestra next fall or chamber music in the springtime. And we're very excited to have some new members in this orchestra. Selena Johnson, who was doing the timpani. Please give her a hand. And Georgie, who is playing the cello. And Asher, who is playing the violin. So if you know anyone um, who is either you know, schooling here, retired, uh, please, if you know anyone, encourage them to play instruments with us. It's, uh, we really have a great time. And you get to hear us many, many more times coming with new members. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening.